Anybody have any challenges they want to discuss? Yeah. Okay, we like that. The doctor okay. and you have a student loan. What's the process on purchasing a house with that? The debt, there's a debt ratio. So uh, the lender is going to. Income, and then see what they can qualify for based upon their total monthly output. So all their credit card payments, student debt. So as, as long as they meet a certain ratio, it's usually about a third. It's probably a half. So at one. PM. May is coming in to teach the mortgage class. She's a okay. So what I want to do real quick is see, I'm gonna share the screen. I have a question too. Okay, bring it. So yesterday I called some of the um, people that you had given me for the foreclosures. And uh -oh. um, one of them was saying that uh, their, their, their lawyer answered the call and apparently the like uh, LLC that it was listed under, apparently that was for the lawyer and he was questioning why I was calling him. I explained that it showed that that was the owner's information. He said that the house had already gone, uh, was already pending and that he already had a broker and that they were solving it. But in this case, like if they already had a broker, wouldn't it, wouldn't it have been changed online to, to the status change? Um, so did you go on the MLS? Yeah, I went on the MLS. Sorry, you broke up. I didn't hear what you said. Is the property for sale on the MLS? Um, I don't. I don't think it was, but he made it sound like it was already. It was already being sold. Like there was okay. nothing more that they could do. So that it's possible. I mean, that is definitely possible. And then I had a question for the ones that are REO. I didn't call those. Where? For those, can we call them or what, like, how do you deal with the REOs? So when, when something is REO, that means that the property, you want to ask the bank if you can sell the property for them. And mm -hmm. you should be making a relationship with the asset manager at the bank. Mm -hmm. The manager is going to have a lot of foreclosures in the future. And mm -hmm. you want to be want to be that person that they call okay you kind of broke up but basically i got that uh it's already been sold to the bank and that i can still call the bank and ask them if they want to do business or if they need me to help them sell it and to stay in touch with them to keep the relationship going and then a uh, weekly or bi-weekly email mm -hmm. Just Want to be top of mind to the bank to the whoever's the asset manager. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. Uh, just really quick, I thought the audio issue was on my end, but uh, I can we can only hear uh, bits and pieces of uh, the question um, and sometimes the answer. Is it me mumbling or is it the audio? I don't know if it's your mic, but we can hear the people on Zoom, but your mic, it seems to be cutting in and out. Okay. Thank you for letting me know that. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll look into that.
So something I, that I want to show is um, from the MLA. MLS home screen, go to profile and you want to go to listing. Orientation. Um, I don't I think that they go over this at orientation. I'm not sure, but I, I just want to make sure that you guys do it. Um, list. Right here, it's going to take you to this page and you're going to create a header. And the header an email from the MLS to a client or a grant of anything. The header is, is what's going to appear at the top in a blank document. I mean you're going to a document without your without your contact information. So you want your contact information uh, at the top of Press edit on my header. There's all different kinds of head headers that you can do. This is this is a three line header without of three line, four line photo without photo. So you can pick the one that you want to use. I'm just I'm just telling you like uh, so. That's what I, I put my name at the top, Keller Williams, Beverly Hills, my phone number, my email. A line that's the shift key over the enter key on your keyboard. I like to use that little separator thing. And then I it's like, and I save it as default. All right. So hopefully you guys do the header because every it'll also have your name on it. If you're doing an open house, don't use the um, the listing agents flyers. Print your own. <laughs> All right. Um, All right. Regarding. Everyone who wants access to my shared resources, just email me at that email address, JJ. You know, shared resources. Just email me there, I'll add you. I'm going to show you what I've done so far. Just to Okay. Mm -hmm. You said send you an email with just the subject. Just send me an email. And uh, it's really weird that I can't access my phone drive. Normally, yeah. I All right, whatever. So, um,
for you. Sorry to interrupt, but the mic is still going in and out. So if you're explaining something, I guess we can't hear it. Or... I, I, I was. Um, the, the the offer we're gonna we're gonna start talking about offers. Um, this is something that I'll have in the resources. Um, it's basically just a, a daily calendar um, that you guys can. We organize our day. And the number one thing that's there calls oh. is called. Make our calls. Is there any way to check the audio? Because it's so bad. We're, we're pretty much just going to miss this because we're getting like one out of every 20 words. I wonder where the audio. Does anyone know where the audio, where the mic is? Does this sound any better online from this location? Um, yeah, no. it, it was sounding better. Maybe. No one yet. I don't know what to do. Um, let me. all right we're, we're working on the audio someone's coming armin armin is coming Okay. I guess the audio is cutting in now. Yeah, I did on the watch. Click preview. I think we're pretty good. Make sure we have here in the box. The box. Uh -huh. Actually, just a name. Uh, name, name. So, this is just like your what? calendar. And it just, yeah. yeah, yes. Go into that. Yeah, everyone on Zoom hear us? Uh, Uh, the blue bar on the top, the blue bar. Yes, there should be something called the profile. Okay.
the profile, and then you want to click list competitors on the third one. Can anyone hear us? Then create new custom header. Yeah. Is that better? Is the audio better? So far, it sounds like it's better. I think if you kind of you know keep speaking because it was a, a cutting out was the issue. Okay. Hopefully, hopefully this is like you remain like three lines is the best. We'll try it. So if you scroll down, there's a few more three lines. Yeah. Yeah. Three yeah. line, yeah. Three line with photo, three line without photo, whatever you like. You can you can play with it. Thank you very much. It seems to be working better now. Okay, great. Yeah, so, thank you. So let's just talk real quick about offers. Um, so basically, you're going to take your client out on Sunday or Tuesday or private showings. You're going to look at properties. Every time you look at a property with them, the question is, do you like this? Do you want to write an offer on it? And don't be afraid of them to say yes. <laughs> don't be afraid. Um, but what you're not going to do is write the write the offer with them. Don't worry. Don't. You're going to say, okay, great. I'm going to go back to my desk, and I'll do comps, and I'll send them to you, and then we can decide how much you want to write the offer. With. Okay. So we're going to do lots of comp classes here. We did one yesterday. We'll do another one more. We'll do it all the time. Um, so basically what we're going to, what, what you're going to do is you're going to call me, you're going to say, JJ, I'm ready to write an offer. We're going to do comps together. And then I, and then you'll send it. I'm going to make you guys look like Robson. Okay. We'll, we'll do it under your NLS, your CAR. So it'll, come, it'll be coming from you. Um, so you'll do comps, you'll send them the comps, and then we'll discuss how much you want to write your offer for. This is the information that you need to write it on. Okay, so first of all, you want to see did your buyer talk to a lender, right? So hopefully they've already talked to a lender and they have pre-approval. If they haven't, now's the time. They need they need to get in touch with the lender. Uh, we need a pre-approval ASAP because if you are a listing agent and you have a listing, and let's just say it's priced right, you've had a lot of activity, offers are starting to come in. You have a stack of offers here that have pre-approval and a stack of offers that don't have pre-approval. Where is your attention going to go? Right, exactly. So, so the buyer, some of your buyers are going to say, I'll worry about that when the time comes. Like, let's get my offer accepted. Let's submit it and let's see if they accept it. Then I'll talk to you. You know, some buyers just, they're like that, you know, but we, we have to educate them um, that this is really important. And we use the scenario that I just said. If you're the listing agent and you have offers on the table that have pre-approval and don't have pre-approval, you know, your, your focus is on the ones that do. Your focus is on the offers that are clean, you know, really tight. We're, we'll go over what, what they say. Uh, you will charge them. What if they won't charge All cash is fantastic. We need proof of funds. Show me the money. Funds. Show me the money. Um, so proof of funds means a bank statement with the buyer's name and it's current. And it shows the balance. Right, um, a line of a letter of credit, a line of credit, and also you know available balance, available. That's that's good for proof of funds. Um, questions? Any, any questions? Any if anyone online has a question, you know, just shout it out. What do we need? Okay, so what do we need? so so what do we need from the buyer in order to write an offer? Right, we need to know the names that are going to be on the offer. Who's the offer from? We need to know their name, their legal name. If it's husband and wife or partner, whatever, we need to know all, all the people that are writing it off. Um, if the offer is coming from an LLC, that's fine. Uh, we just need to know who's responsible for signing on behalf of the LLC and then what their title is for the LLC. It's usually manager. But it can be director, it can be president, whatever. Um, same thing if it's a trust, 
Uh, if the offer is coming from a trust, it could be a cash purchase or not. If, it, if it's coming from a trust, um, then we want to know who's the trustee. Who's, who's does the trust authorize to sign on behalf of the trust? Um, sometimes you will add and or assign me as buyer number two. It's possible. On the on the purchase agreement, on, on the purchase agreement, but you know you'll have one person's name and then and or assign them. You, you can do it that way too. Um, so re regarding assigning a contract, assigning a contract, um, the sell it's it's inside the contract that it needs to be done within seventy days. We'll look at that today. Um, the seller can't reasonably stop you from assigning the contract. Reasonable. If it's to a complete third party that they that they're uh, you know is unaffiliated with the current buyer, um, if if there's going to be an assignment, us as listing agents want to make sure that contingencies are removed first, right? So we want to make sure that the current buyer is on the hook to do the purchase, meaning they remove their contingencies. If they back out, they lose their deposit. Okay, that's what that means. Contingencies are removed means the buyer backs out, they lose their deposit. We don't want to transfer or assign a contract until contingencies have been removed. Okay, we're keeping the first buyer on the hook for their deposit. Okay, we're not really sure. You, you, you can't put Mr. and Mrs. So and so. You can't you say that. You can't say Mr. and Mrs. John. You can't say Mr. and Mrs. because Mr. and Mrs. both need to sign. Oh, this is so you have to say John and Mrs. And yes, so you have to name both of them. Oh, and both of them have to sign individually. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, if the property is a multi unit, okay. and so one of the contingency is to deliver a vacant this property. Multi unit? Delivered vacant? Yes. Okay. Like two units or three units, and you want to. Okay. That, 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 so 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 there's there's two, there's different purchase agreements. So right now we're talking about the residential purchase agreement, which is for a single family or condo. The other purchase agreement is called a residential income purchase agreement, the RIPA instead of the RPA. The RIPA. In that one, um, it talks about tenant occupied units, and if they're going to be delivered vacant or with tenants. No, yeah, I'm saying that we want to be delivered vacant. So so the way the way that the Regular purchase agreement is written. The buyer will take possession. Okay. The, the the standard. That's you have to check box if it's not going to be there. You have to then yeah. start checking boxes on the income property purchase agreement. Also, you're going to be paying attention to occupied, not occupied. And there's a place also to get um, um, estoppel estoppel certificates. And so yeah. Before we go back to what we need for the office, yes. we just jumped back to the pre-approval. Would you ask that uh, after showing a house where you're saying, would you like to write an offer? So hopefully the buyer has already talked to a lender. Um, sometimes buyers are hesitant to have their credit run prior to talking to a lender. And a lender can, so this is the difference between a pre-qualification and a pre-approval. Pre-qualified. Pre-qualified means that based upon the verbal stuff you told me, I'm giving you a pre-qualification. Once you give me your credit scores and your bank statements and everything, then I will approve you. Right. That's a pre-approval. So there's actually check boxes in the R in the offer we're using today. One's pre-qualified and one's pre-approval. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when I get a letter from when I get a letter from the lender with an offer, I'm reading it and it's gonna say. Uh, we have reviewed your credit scores. We have, based upon the bank statements you've given us, the proof of funds that you've shown us, you are approved, pre-approved, based so upon the property. So we want to bring it up to them to ask if they have approved pre approval, but if not, speak to a lender as soon as possible. Yes. Like, as soon as possible. You're going to get pushed back from your buyer to talk to a lender because they're, they're going to tell you, I'm not worried about it. But the, here's the issue. When a great property comes on the market, they need to jump fast because if it's a great property, there's a lot of people there, yeah. and and they need to be ready. And they might call the lender at that point, and it's too late because the lender's going to say, you know, I need three days, I need two days. So, yeah. So is the pre-qualified? Is that that's verbal approval? 
Pretty much. I mean, you, we can ask May when she comes at one o'clock, but, but that's the difference between pre qualified and pre approved. Pre approved means that, that the lender has underwritten the buyer okay. based then, upon the property. Then, then it's just approving the property. And then, then verbal approval that comes from who? Uh, also, okay. also, okay. but I don't think you can get a, a verbal approval from Bank of America, Wells Fargo, Chase. Like they're, they don't have that. Oh, okay. Like those kind of lenders, direct lenders, they're going to put all your stuff into the system. Just spit out the Yeah, they don't have stuff like that. It's the private lenders that do that. And then how long does it take for a buyer to get approved? So that's the thing. Uh, pre approved. It could, there are some lenders that can spit it out the same day. If there's some in the morning, um, some need 24 hours, some need 48. Okay, so what do we need? We need the buyer's names. How are they going to hold title? Who's the offer coming from? Then, how much do you want to offer, right? So that we'll get to that one because we're going to send them comps. Um, how long an escrow do we want? Do we want a 30 day escrow, 45 day escrow, 60 day escrow? Look, this question is really a lender question. It's it, you need to get in touch with the lender that your buyer is going to use yeah. and ask that lender how long does it take to get a loan right now? Because sometimes lenders are really busy. Like if rates, people that are that are getting loans right now, um, they're getting a certain rate. If the interest rates drop next month, the lenders are going to be packed with refinance. It just takes longer to get everything processed. So right now, I think everyone's moving pretty quickly. I think everyone can do. 30 days or less right now it is, but you know, there's times where it, it takes longer. So I, we, that's what we want to know. We want how long, how long an escrow, because we need to put that in our offer, how long an escrow. Um, you're going to tell the buyer that they have three days, three business days from acceptance to get their deposit into escrow. So de deposits are usually 3%. And they'll have it's it's the only thing in the contract that's that's business days. Everything else is calendar. So they'll have three business days to get their deposit into escrow. Um, you said three percent. That's a deposit. So so you have a you have a deposit. You have a down payment. The down payment is the total amount they're coming out of pocket with, and the balance is the loan amount. So they have the buyer's down payment. Plus the loan equals the purchase price. Out of that down payment, will be a deposit, right? So the deposit yeah. plus the remainder is the down payment, and then the loan. And then part of it just said, how to hold title. What did you say after that? The how to hold title? Uh, next thing you said. We just we want their legal names. Um, right, is it names. How, how Title the next thing I said was, um, how much do you want to offer? Because we're gonna we're gonna send them comps for that. Can you repeat what three percent was again? Three percent. So if you are writing an offer for a million dollars, normally the buyer will put thirty thousand dollars into escrow uh, as a deposit. Is that the earnest money? It's an earnest money deposit. Yeah, you're gonna so you're gonna hear terms like EMT. Okay, so three percent is the Deposit. Yes. Is that what you put on the offer? Like the, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we're going to do it now. So let's do it. So um, this is the car.org homepage. And then, so this zip forms is where we access our forms. In, in the resource guide, the, in the resources, I'm also giving you a desktop application that you can install on your computer. Um, uh, we don't see it. No, no. Uh, if you email me at j, if you email me at jj at wallach.com. Okay. jj at w a l l a c k dot com. Uh, just ask me for the KW resources. I'm going to send you a link to a folder. And in that folder, it'll have an application that you can install on your computer, Mac or PC. Because let's say you need to write an offer and the CAR website's down or your, inter your internet's down and you need to get an offer. It, it has all the forms locally on your computer. Uh, okay. So, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to log into CAR.
Hello, hello, hello. So, okay. Huh? On CAR. Yes, you must do that. Yes. So when you join the Board of Realtors, you're joining the Beverly Hills Greater Los Angeles yeah. Association of Realtors. GLAR. GLAR, Greater Los Angeles Association of Realtors. Um, when you join that, you automatically are a member of California Association of Realtors and National Association of Realtors. So anyone that wants to be a realtor has to join their local board, and then they're automatically part of California and National. So what's that NRDS? NRDS is your is your national number. Number. Oh, yeah. The back that, yeah, your ner your nerds, it, your nerds, your nerds, your nerd. Your it's your nerds number. <laughs> Na national realtor, whatever it is. Yes. That's the license number, right? That's that's not your license number. It's your realtor number. Yeah. So there is a difference because difference, yeah. your your being a realtor means that you're abiding by the code of ethics. If you're dealing with a real estate licensee who is not a realtor, they have no code of ethics. So they only have to obey the law. They don't have to obey the code of ethics. So code of ethics means I can't call your client without your permission. If I am not a realtor, I can't call your client without your permission. So beware of those commercial agents who are not realtors. They will call your clients. Okay. All right. So I am now in CAR. We're gonna we're gonna get right into. Also, if we went to CAR home page, yes. Where did you go from there? I'm sorry. That's okay. From the CAR homepage, let me exit this. Okay. From the CIR homepage, I logged in. Okay. And then once I log in, I'm going to go here, transactions. Transactions. Yeah, transactions. Okay. 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 And then from transactions, I'm going to zip form, Lone Wolf Transaction Zip Form Edition Access Now. Okay. Thank you for that question. Sorry, I didn't mean to blast through that. But I, I'm, I'm going to zip form. I'm accessing zip form. And then it's validating my membership, and then I'll be able to enter zip forms. Continue to transactions. Now, in, in this screen, um, I have a list of all my transactions. So what you're going to do is you're going to press this new, this new button. And when you press new, you're gonna say new purchase offer, new purchase offer, we'll just do it real quick. New offer, okay. And then you're gonna name it. I usually name it the property address. Yeah. Right, so it's uh, one, two, three, four, five, Sample Street. And then it's residential, it's active, save, boom. It takes me into this screen. Hey, JJ. Yes. So if we're not License yet. Okay. Oh, no, because you need your license to join the board. So, and then once you join the board, you will have access to this. What and then the resources, you send? the resources you'll have right away. You, that, yeah, that you'll get right away. After I go into transactions, what else do I do? After you go into transactions, you're going to access it. Yeah. You need to press access. Yeah. That's going to take you to the screen right before this, hopefully. Yeah. Hopefully it'll take you to the screen right before this. Or you're gonna go to, you need to go to zip form. Lone wolf zip form. Access now. Right. Now once once you do new and create a transaction, <coughs> you're gonna hit the this documents tab. I just want you guys to know that when the first time I wrote an offer, it took me all day. Okay. The second time I wrote an offer, it took me half a day. The third time I wrote an offer, it took me all day again <coughs> because I forgot. So much time went by, right? <coughs> now I can write an offer in 10 minutes, okay? But it's only because I'm doing it. Like I'm doing it, I'm doing it. You, you're going to get familiar with it. Don't worry. But, you know, when we're together, we're going to go through everything together. 
but don't worry. Like I'm, I'm zooming through stuff. I know, slow me down. I had a lot of coffee today. All right, documents. So documents tab is where you're going to find your forms. They, they hid all the documents. So let's say we, there's this add document thing. There's also this quick little arrow button on the upper right-hand corner that if you click, it takes you to the form libraries. And this is where all the forms are. You can search for forms. There's different libraries. Real quick, I'll just show you. These are all the CAR forms, California Association of Realtor Forms. There's also sample letters here, which you can check out. There's something here called e-publications, electronic publications. There's going to be like government hazard disclosures in that in that one right there. Um, so right now we're just really concerned with this one, the California Association of Realtors. Pardon the interruption. Um, I'm so, so, hate to be the the you know the one that's always speaking up. Uh, we I don't know if you're doing a, a screen share, but we can't see what you're doing. We can only see somewhat what you're doing from the monitor. Yes. So all 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 I was doing right now is I was clicking on that um, on that arrow in the upper right hand corner that brings the the forms there. Uh, let me try hitting this add add doc above. Hey JJ. Uh, yeah. we act, so whenever you click on the tabs, we actually can't see anything. I'm not sure if you're actually sharing uh, the screen fully. So we see the web page, but we don't see the tabs. We don't see anything else that you're doing. Oh, you know what? Uh, okay, one second. How's that? Huh. Is that better? Yeah, there we go. Perfect. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right. So, it, so basically, what I did was from the home screen, I did new transaction. I clicked on new transaction, and then I wrote new purchase offer. I clicked that, and then I created something called one two three four five Sample Street. You can do it again. We're on the purchase agreement, right? Yeah under purchase new purchase agreement sample street and then i just hit residential active save and it takes me to this screen um in this screen in the upper left hand corner it'll have the address and then there's a documents tab it says summary parties documents if i click documents then i can add a document or i can go in the upper right hand corner and hit that arrow and then here are all the car documents Okay, the, add all the, document the, the one that I'm adding right now is the California Residential Purchase Agreement. It's the first document. Oh, yes, one if one. I click on it, it adds it to my transaction. Now there are a couple of others. There are a couple of other forms that I'm going to add. Um, one of them is called MCA, the Market Conditions Advisory, and the other one I'm going to add is called the SBSA. That's the statewide buyer and seller advisory. That, that's already on the, on the phone already, right? No, the RPA? no, not, no, not yet. No, no. Market, is not there. market conditions advisory, not that I'm aware of. I think it's there. Okay, you know what, let me, let me click into yeah, it. That's it on the end, at the end of the office. Let me click into it, see. It's already yeah. there. I have known to be wrong. Consumer privacy, fair appraisal, investigation advisory. Residential person? No, it's not. It's not attached. No. Okay, that's okay. That's okay. So I, I, I am wrong. Call, definitely calling. Okay, now I am. I've already created um, something here called the winning purchase agreement. So I'm going to go into that transaction now, so we can discuss that document. So in in my purchase agreement folder, I have a purchase agreement. I have the market conditions advisory, and I have the statewide. I'm also going to have an instruction sheet for you in the shared resource folder. Okay, step by step. But today we're just going to go through this. Now I'm, I'm clicking on the document itself, and I have an option of using the classic editor or the new form editor. I am used to using the classic editor. Um, for me, it's cleaner. I have played with the other one. You might like it, and you can try both. You know, you're not gonna you're not gonna hurt anything by trying. So. But I'm, I'm just going to go for today's purpose into the classic. 
and it's going to pull up the purchase agreement. All right, the first the first page in the purchase agreement is an agency disclosure. Um, an agency basically just describes what an agent is. Yeah. There are agents that represent sellers. There's agents that represent buyers. And then agents represent both buyer and seller. And in all of these circumstances, we're talking about the broker. Okay. Uh, what is our responsibility to the buyer, to the seller? Our responsibility is fair dealing. We can't lie. We can't hide something that we know is, is defective. Um, what I tell a seller when I'm signing this document is that my duty to the seller is always to get them the most money. If a buyer comes without an agent and I'm, and I will, I will write the buyer's offer to help facilitate the transaction. Um, but my duty is to get the seller the most money. Yeah. Okay. Uh, for the buyer right now, it's just explaining to the buyer, I'm representing you. That's, that's, this, that's why this form exists, is that you're representing the buyer. So the buyer is going to, you're going to put your buyer's name right there. See, I already filled this out. So you guys are going to have this um, to reference. So you'll put name of buyer one on that line. If there's a buyer number two, you'll put their name there. You'll check the boxes for the buyers. The agent, you're going to type it just like this. The agent is the real estate broker. That's Keller Williams, Beverly Hills. This is our office's DRE number on that line. You're going to put your name right there and your DRE number right there. Okay. Page two is the civil code that just talks about the law that you have to give someone an agency disclosure. And it talks about the language that needs to be on the agency disclosure. So that's, that's what page one is. Page two, fair housing, can't discriminate. You know, there's really nothing else to say. Can't, you can't discriminate. So buyer, the buyer will sign that. Now, this is the first place that you are gonna be entering the name of the seller. In order to get the name of the seller, we need to go to title. So I recommend that you guys all have accounts with Clearmark title, yeah. okay? If you don't, um, just go create one on, on, on Clearmark. So title. Clearmark title, Jerry Ferris, Ferris is our is our account representative, Jerry Ferris. You can also email me, yes. and I will make sure that you get your account set up with him. If you're if you're if you buy it, you don't need to put the seller's We name. do put the seller's name because on on any contract, you need both party you need both parties' names on the contract in order the to be a valid contract. Name the listing agent knows the seller's name. You right. know who they are. Correct, but the element of a contract, part of the element, one of the elements of a contract is parties. Oh, you have to have a buyer and you have to have a seller. Yeah. So you can't have a contract if you don't have the seller's name on it. Yeah. Do we need a certain uh, type of uh, uh, office number or something to uh, create the account with Clearmark? Uh, or if you don't have it, just email me and I'll help you with okay. it. I, right now, because I, I, we have a lot to cover. No, so. No. Um, so you're saying yeah. use Clearmark just to assure... Okay, so I use Clearmark title yes. to find out the name of the seller. And a lot of times, um, I, what I always do with Clearmark is I look at the grant deed. I want to see the last grant transfer of ownership. Who's on title? Who's on first? Who's on title? Because if the title's in a trust, I need to know the names of the trustees. And, and the, the grant deed will, will say to me, the name of the old seller when they transferred the deed to the new buyer, how the new buyer took title. That, that's what I'm looking at. So we'll- there's also, They also we'll have an app, I think, Jimmy. Yeah, there's an app, there's an app, but- So it's the same thing. Right? I don't know if you can get the grantee from the app. I haven't tried it. Oh. Okay, the next form is called possible representation of more than one buyer or seller. Uh, this just avoids issues that you didn't, like, you know, you, you have an offer and then all of a sudden you're in multiple offers. Uh, you know, all these, all these forms exist because of a lawsuit, right? Yeah. So this is just explaining to buyers and sellers that these are different types of scenarios. You can have multiple buyers for the same property. You can have multiple sellers being represented by the same broker. There's dual agency. And also that offers are not necessarily confidential. 
a listing agent does have the right to discuss every term of an offer that they receive. If I, if I get an offer and you call me, you say, JJ, are there any offers on the property? I'm allowed to tell you, yes, it's uh, from, this person. from this person. This is how much they offer. This is how long oh, it, okay. I can tell you everything. 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 See, not, 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 it's, none of them, they say there is no, your best price. There is no, now, now, I'm not going to tell you that. Yes. Well, not I'm not going to tell you, but I can. The fact. I can. Oh, can. But now we're talking oh. about negotiations. Oh, I see. So negotiate for me to get my seller the most money. Uh -huh. I'm not going to tell you that. Well, I'm going to tell you I have amazing strong offers. Right. You need to get your best offers right. to me. Okay. Right. So if you're representing uh, JJ three buy three or of your buyers, can you tell them the details of one buyer to the other or no? I'm allowed to do anything I okay. want. Nothing's confidential. Now, let's say you're representing a high profile celebrity, someone who does not want anything discussed. Okay, in that scenario, there is a form called confidentiality, a confidentiality form. That confidentiality form will need to be signed by the seller, the listing broker, agent, our office, and you, and the buyer. Everyone has to sign that confidentiality form prior to us putting the offer in. So is that if the said celebrity or high profile person is a buyer or a seller yeah. or either? If your buyer does, if you want to, if your buyer wants confidentiality, yes. then a confidentiality agreement has to be signed and everyone. agreed to by everyone prior to you making the offer, I right? Because if you write the offer, nothing's been agreed to confidentiality. They're allowed to, they're allowed to call e-news and say, hey, I just got an offer. Did, right? did you have a title? Title, everyone involved everyone. should be signing it. Everybody, yeah, everyone, good good question. It, the, I didn't mention title because they're not on that form. But yeah. yeah, I mean, everyone involved. Because Lauren you know, knew about that big yeah. purchase and he wasn't talking about so, that. So, signing it. So the issue is it's gonna leak. It's gonna leak. It's gonna leak, but we don't wanna be sued for it leaking. Exactly. All right. Hey, JJ. Yeah. So for that highly profiled client, if they're looking to even put in an offer, that document has to not only be signed off by the buyer, but also by the seller before the offer is sent over? Correct, because they didn't agree to confidentiality yet. Okay. So here's, here's the confidentiality. So what I did was I just clicked that little arrow on the right, and I have a little box here called confidentiality. I click it. It's now part of my transaction. Who are the people signing confidentiality? Uh, the seller... So it's, it's asking you what you want confidential and then who signs it, the buyer, the seller, the listing firm and the selling firm. So if you want other people to be a party to this, then you're gonna have to create a document. You know, I'm sure they're gonna have attorneys involved at that point, right? So let's go back to the purchase agreement. Okay. The next form is the wire fraud form. This is, getting more rampant. I don't know if you guys are getting phone calls from people. I got a phone call. I put an ad in the LA Times for my open house two weeks ago. I got a call last week from someone saying, hi, this is so-and-so from the LA Times. Uh, we don't have your credit card information. Wow. And I said, yeah. I wouldn't have been able to place my ad without my credit card. Yeah. She said, okay, let me talk to my manager. Thank you. And I'm not. So just letting you know, people are really, yeah. people are just being clever. How, how I saw a YouTube video this morning from an agent that I subscribe to on YouTube that has, she does all these videos and she said, um, something, so any, here's the danger in wire. There are hackers that are hacking escrows emails, yeah. right? So basically if I can, if I have the username and password to an escrow's email account, I can monitor escrow's emails. I can send email as if I am escrow. So I can send, if someone opens an escrow, I can, I now know who's opening it. Yes. I can send them wire instructions, with my bank account information, yes. pretending I'm escrow, but it's got my bank information. Anyway, this is the issue. I when, asked Kristen about that. She says that's not your problem unless you do a three-way phone it's call. It's not our problem, and exactly. but your buyer can lose a lot of no, money. No, but it says unless you do a three-way call, you tell your buyer not to wire anything. That's yes. what she says. So unless you do a three-way okay. call, yeah. 
So we want to make sure that our buyer is on the phone with the escrow officer, the real escrow officer, yes, yes, yes. and confirming Before wire confirming getting... wire instructions. Exactly. Yes. And it's in, in, and those messages are encrypted anyway, right? From the escrow, right? So a lot of escrows do use an internal in, internal, an internal system right. where the buyer will have to log in yes. to get stuff. That, yeah, that's and it's good. Uh, NDA is a non-disclosure agreement, confidential, same thing. Same thing. same thing, but it's just what's in it. Okay, okay. here we go. California Residential Purchase Agreement and Joint Escrow Instructions. Do you have any questions? I mean, stop no, me no, if you no, do. No. Okay, all right. Date prepared, today's date. If you double click that, it will automatically put today's date in it. But I, I have prepared this document and marked it up for you for instructions, like what to do. Okay, so when you get to the resource folder, you'll see this and you'll be able to see exactly how to fill out an offer. So you'll put today's date there. This is an offer from, you'll put your buyer's names there, which will already be there because you put them on the agency disclosure on the first page. The property to be acquired is, you'll put the address in, the city, the county, mm -hmm. the zip code, uh, the assessor's parcel number you'll get from the MLS listing or from public records, the APN, okay. Um, the seller's brokerage firm is the listing brokerage. You'll put their name there, whatever brokerage that is, and their DRE number. And then the seller's agent, you'll put their name and their DRE number. The buyer brokerage is us, Keller Williams Beverly Hills. That's our license number, 01428775. And then your name will go there and your DRE number next to it. If there is more than one brokerage representing either the buyer or seller, you'll check one of those boxes and it'll pull up an additional form. So that's this checkbox right here says more than one brokerage. Sometimes you'll have a property that's co-listed. Co yeah. It can be co-listed by two agents in the or same three. office or three in the same office. You might have a property that's listed by two different brokerages. Then you'd be checking that box. Normally they do that for, for, for exposure, right? Like the expensive properties. You can, like you can. You can. I mean, yeah. All right. Okay, here we go. Purchase price. This is, I just put a million just for the sake of writing it off. So I'm pretending that I'm writing a million dollar offer. So purchase price is 1 million. Um, I told you before to see how fast they can close escrow because the next line on B is how many days after acceptance. If you check that box, you can put 30 days. I want my offer to be really aggressive. I checked this box, I wrote C3G2. What's 3G2? We'll go down to 3G2. Close of escrow to be 30 days from acceptance or less by mutual agreement. Buyer is willing to close escrow as soon as lender is able. Mm -hmm. That is more aggressive than writing 30 days, right? right? CJ, if you don't close in 30 days, can the uh, seller cancel? Okay. Oh, okay, so real quick, uh, we'll talk about timing. timing. When a buyer makes an offer, they are talking about right now the price, how long escrow is going to be, and when the buyer is going to remove contingencies and make their deposit basically non-refundable, right? So the seller is accepting that offer. The seller has to sell at the purchase price, and they have to sign a grant deed, and they have to close on time. That's the seller's responsibility. The buyer's responsibility is to is to put their money into escrow and close on time and remove contingencies when they're supposed to. And the seller has to sell at the purchase price and close on time and be vacant, probably, right? Okay, I wrote here a little note, check with the lender how fast they can close escrow. Um, the initial deposit amount. Now here, here, the next line is expiration of offer. By default, the offer is good for three calendar days at 5 p.m. Yeah, 5 p.m. three. Now, if I'm writing an offer on a Friday and they're having an open house on Sunday, I really wanna get my offer accepted before the open house Sunday. I'm gonna put an expiration date here of 5 p.m. Saturday. 
Okay, I'm, I want my offer accepted before more people come in and write offers. Then I'm competing in multiple offers. I don't want that. But they don't have to. They, they don't. The to. seller. Well, they. I'm writing a good offer. Good offer yeah. They should respond to me right away. Okay, I want. Oh. Right. Yes. But the seller may not. Agree, the seller might not. The seller might not. But look, I'm trying to get this deal from my buyer, and I don't want to create a situation where there's more offers. If I'm writing an offer on Thursday or Friday, I want my offer accepted before Sunday. Because the seller might just be like, well, I'll wait till Sunday and see if we get other offers. Yeah. yeah. So you hear you can be a little aggressive on the expiration, but just know that the default is three day, three calendar days, 5 p.m. Uh, initial deposit, here's where here's where you put the 3% deposit down. So $30,000. 30, um, JJ, what would they get sometimes more deposit, like 5%? The depo okay, so we'll, we'll talk about that. Oh, okay. We'll talk about that when we get to liquidated damage. Oh, okay. So right now, 3%. Uh, within three business days after acceptance. This is the only thing in the, in the purchase agreement that's business days. Everything else is calendar days. Now, when we talk about the date of acceptance, that is when all time starts. Everything starts from day of acceptance. 30-day escrow starts from day of acceptance. Uh, inspection contingency, loan contingency, appraisal contingency. Those all start from day of acceptance. It doesn't matter when escrow opens. JJ. Yes. An offer gets accepted at 5.01 p.m. So that's day one. If an offer gets accepted at 11.59 p.m., that's day one. That's actually day zero. It's day, day zero. zero. Day zero. The next day is day one. Got it. So yeah, it, all the way up until 11.59 and 59 seconds, yeah. uh, that is day zero. Day zero. So. So it doesn't matter. Sometimes like you, you're rushing, everyone wants to open escrow, open escrow, open escrow, but it doesn't matter. We can have an acceptance today and not open escrow until next Tuesday. All the time starts ticking from today. That was the day of acceptance. All right. All right, let's keep going. Uh, loan amount. So here's, here's where the lender is telling you how much the buyer is approved for. We're going to enter just for the sake of this offer. This is a buyer is putting 20% down and they're borrowing 80%. So I'm gonna put in here 800,000 is the loan amount. And then I'm entering a rate not to exceed 7% and the buyer not to pay more than half a point to obtain that loan. So, so you're gonna get these numbers from the lender. They're gonna tell you the, now, why is this important? Because if you wanna use the loan contingency to back out, there has to be something written here. If you don't write anything here, you can't use the loan to back out. Because I'll make a loan for 20% interest yeah. if anyone wants one. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Right. So if there's no terms here, you can't use the loan to back out. out. Yeah. So you have to back so out saying, saying I can't get this loan. I'm not approved for this 7% half so of the loan. So now this 7% is good, right? May is coming at 1 p.m. We'll find out. But this changes. It fluctuates. But you want to get these numbers from the lender. Um, if, if, it's, if it's an FHA loan, you only have to put three and a half percent down. You can check that box, FHA. Sometimes you'll be deal, dealing with a veteran. Um, you can check VA. If there's seller financing involved, you can check that box. Most of the time, you're just doing a straightforward offer. It's either going to be a cash offer or with a loan. And this is how you're going to fill it out when there's a loan. If it's a cash offer, nothing will be in that box. And this balance of down payment right here is going to show basically 970,000, right? Instead of 170,000. Everyone with me so far? JJ, question. If somebody puts, puts a cash offer and doesn't. Oh my gosh, is it really 1241? Is it? Yes. Yeah. Holy cow. And doesn't, okay. and, then, and doesn't close in cash, is that fraud? Uh, Fraud? Yeah. No. That's what Tristan says. They give you cash no, offer. So this so every scenario is different. We can talk. We can talk okay, about it. We can talk about that. Okay. I want to get through just now. Honestly, we we just need to get through the first few pages of this. It's so don't. Two, three pages yeah. Time. There's this. This is the way that the new purchase agreement is. They put everything in the first in the front, few pages yeah. up front. Right. We just need to get through this front part. Everything else is boilerplate language. Uh, we will. If, we will have a day where we read every single detail. But we, this is everything is here to fill out properly, and your your buyer is fully protected. Um, on page two, 
we're, we're this, this is very rare that we'll be asking a seller upfront to give credit. Sometimes in a FHA loan, if someone's coming in with a hundred, they're in the borrowing a hundred percent, they're asking the seller to pay that three and a half percent. We can ask it here. Wow. Um, it happens. Okay, uh, what did I make a note here? Check one of these below. And, the, and this was the pre-qualification letter or the pre-approval letter. Remember I was talking about the difference on that? So right now, the way that the boilerplate language in the offer, it says verification of cash, it's attached to the offer. So that means proof of funds is automatically attached to the offer. Verification of down payment and closing costs, attached. Verification of loan application, attached. So the way that the offer is written right now, it says that we are in, we're including a pre-approval and proof of funds, okay? If we're not doing that, we should be checking one of these boxes to say when, it's, when it will come. And that's three days after acceptance, two days at one day after acceptance, okay? Final verification of condition. Before you close escrow, the buyer is allowed to go back to the property and make sure that nothing has changed. They're basically just going to say, Yes, the property is in the same condition as when we went into escrow. No surprises. If there are any surprises, we can delay closing or we can close and demand that escrow withhold some money to make up for something. Like let's say, let's say the movers did some serious damage on move out. Let's close, let's, let's finish the closing, but let's withhold a part of the money to fix that, right? We don't have to- 3% or the additional? Just a two percent, right? Three percent is the deposit. I'm just talking. talking about, I'm talking about right now. Final verification of condition. Oh, okay. we want to make sure that the property is in the same condition as when we went in escrow. Here's where we talk about assignment. If the buyer wants to assign this contract to someone else, to a third party, uh, they have 17 days to do it, and it has to be reasonable. Uh, ask the lender if these times can be shortened. We're talking now about contingencies. A contingency is a is the time period that the buyer has to back out without losing their deposit. 17 days, right? So everything in, is by default in the contract 17 days. So how long does the lender have to approve the loan? 17 days. How long does the appraiser have to come to the property, do an appraisal, submit the appraisal report? 17 days. How long does the buyer have to investigate the property, hire their inspectors, 17 days? I want to shorten these times yes. uh, to be more aggressive. So the first thing I'm asking the lender, how long do you need for appraisal and loan? How long can, can you get an appraiser out right away and get the report back in five days, 10 days? Well, how long? Um, how long will it take for full approval for a lender? So that's, we can, we can ask May how long she can do it now. And I, I would like to shorten these. I changed here investigation of property to 12 days, uh, accessing the property for 12 days. Every, I changed everything to 12. I just, I'm trying to be more aggressive. If, if I get an accepted offer today, for sure I can get the property. Today's what, Thursday? I'm sure I can find an inspector that can come tomorrow. I'm sure I can. Saturday, Sunday, Monday, for sure. That report, I give the report 24, 48 hours to come back. I can get all this done pretty quickly. I can, I can have this all done in seven days if I need to, right? Yeah. Who finds the inspector for the appraiser? Is that the one? So great question. We we don't want to be responsible for inspections. So we're gonna we're gonna help our buyer and we're gonna recommend three inspectors for them to choose from because if they choose the wrong one, that's not our fault. <laughs> but we'll what what I'll usually do is we have um we have some great inspectors here. Alex K uh, is a great inspector. There are other inspectors, but um, sometimes I'll go on Yelp and I'll find the highest rated five star, the most reviews, and I'll call them, are you available? And I'll go down my list. Are you available? Are you available? Um, so it is not our job to facilitate work Yes, payments? but it is, it is our job to help our buyers. Uh -huh. um, but don't recommend one inspector. Because wow. if you recommend one inspector and he misses something, you're making yourself liable. Wow. Maybe, potentially, because you recommended that inspector. And then they can claim collusion and you were hiding something. But if you recommend three inspectors and they choose one, that, you know, that's, yeah, we always recommend offering multiple people to choose from. Sorry, who's Not you. Not you. The buyer should, yeah. So tell the buyer, 
the, the inspector that you, when they make the appointment or when you, when they make the appointment with the inspector or you make the appointment with the inspector, the inspector should be asking them at that time, how will you be paying? Uh, Bring your credit card, you know, pay in advance, in advance. Uh, credit card check, but the buyer should be there with a checkbook or a credit card to pay for the inspector. The, the inspector will usually not deliver the report without getting paid first. Oh. And that's how they that's how they protect themselves. Do you vote with them? I am personally present at all inspections. Um, yes. So generally, uh, once we get to getting our offer accepted, I will I will see what day my general inspector is available. That's my number one inspection is the general. The general goes in the house, on the house, under the house, looks at the plumbing, electric, everything. He's gonna tell me if I need a, additional inspections, okay? So I make sure he's available first. And then if the house has a chimney, I'll get a chimney inspection. I'm probably gonna do a sewer inspection, um, termite inspection. I'll schedule all for the same day, same time. Everyone's coming at the same time. I don't need to go back and forth and back and forth every single inspection. But I'm also confirming with the listing agent that the time that my inspector is available is okay because it has to be okay with the listing agent and the seller. Don't forget the seller has to be out of the house, right? So I'm confirming with everybody that the time is okay and then I'll book everyone for the same time. Mold is also an important inspection. Uh, some people start with mold if they're really sensitive to that, yeah. There's some people that are highly sensitive to mold and they'll just start with that because if a property has mold, they're out. Um, okay. Uh, time of possession is going to be upon recordation. So uh, if we're closing escrow tomorrow, that means that the title, the grantee, is getting recorded at the county recorder's office tomorrow. Everything at the county recorder's office is stamped 8 a.m. because they open at 9. Mm. Okay? The county recorder stamps grantees at 8 a.m. because so no one can record something first. It, it protects the, the buyer. Uh, because it, title, title is ensuring the buyer that the only thing, the only person that has a right to that property is you, the buyer. So that this is all handled by title. So no problem there. Now, here we go, seller occupied or vacant units. We had a question before about vacant units or seller occupied. Um, if the seller is going to be staying in the property past the close of escrow date, we're going to have to check one of these boxes. 29, no more than 29. So there's two different forms. There's a form here for 29 or fewer days, and there's a form for 30 or more days. If the seller is going to stay for longer than 30 days, you better clear it with the lender that it's okay. Yeah. Sometimes the lender will have an issue with it they if it goes to too long. If they don't leave, you have to evict them. Uh, actually, After if it's a days. seller, they're trespassing. Oh. You can get a sheriff to lock them yeah. up. Good, good. Thank you. Yeah, it's not a tenant, but you could potentially create a tenancy. Yes. So you just got to be California, careful. You never yeah. know. So if, if after thirty days uh, and they want to stay, let's say two more months, and can you? This is the dangerous days? part because if they want to stay and you accept their payment, you might be accepting their payment as a tenant. As a tenant. So you have to give them a license. A license is not tenancy. It's a per, it's permission to stay. We have to be really careful. At that point, I would I would consult a real estate attorney. Yeah. At that point, and I wouldn't be the one giving advice either. No. My advice is consult your attorney because no. you, this is potential issue, right? Yeah. Red flag, red flag. Okay, um, the seller has seven days to give us disclosures by by default in the contract. Um, the buyer has five days to sign and return escrow instructions. Uh, the, the seller has to order HOA documents right away. If it's a condo or the property's in an HOA, the seller also needs to make sure that smoke alarms and water heater braced carbon monoxide detector, that all happens at ASAP. How about the AVID? The, oh, so the AVID is an agent visual inspection. Yes. We should print out an AVID and bring it to inspections. Got it. That's the time for the agent to fill out their, their 
So we're not inspectors. Us agents, we're not inspectors. But we do need to visually look at the property and describe what we see visually. This is like this is like right. So there's a stain. On, so if I'm if I'm walking into a room that has stains on carpet, marks on walls, crack in ceiling, the ground, crack over door, hole in wall. I'm never using an adjective. I'm not using big, small. No, no, just hole. Uh, just I'm just telling you, telling a visual what it is. Um, but there's a form called AVID, Agent Visual Inspection Disclosure. You'll add that form to your transaction, you'll print it, and you'll bring it to inspections for you to fill out at inspections. Okay. JJ. Yes. What's your thoughts on, because I was told as agents, we should even do our, our AVID not at the same time as the inspector, just so we're not influenced with uh, whatever the inspector says or or observes. What's your thoughts? So my, my thoughts are, this is your job to, to only write what you see. It. It's just what you see. And usually I'm not talk. I don't even talk to the inspector. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't even talk to the inspector during inspections. I let him do his thing. Because if I'm bothering him, bothering, bothering him, he's not gonna do his job. I let the inspector do his job, go through the entire property. At the end of inspections before he leaves, that's when we'll all huddle at a table and we'll, we'll say, are there any, you know, are, that's when I'm taking my notes. Is there, is there anything that we should know? Um, I know we're gonna get your report, but is there anything? And I, and I want the listing agent to be present at that meeting um, for the listing agent to hear the problems in the property. Because then if the listing agent is present and listening to those issues, she's now going to be an advocate for helping get credit to your buyer or fixing for your buyer. Yeah. When you order, when the HOA docs is ordered for your buyer, do you read yourself with the buyer the HOA docs or you just give it to the buyer? I review the HOA docs myself. So if it's like this, this big. I, I look at them to see. I, I look to see if there are rental restrictions. Right. I want to know if they, once they buy the property, can they rent it right away? Or how long do they need to wait? Sometimes there's 30 days or a year. I want to know the pet restrictions. Are they allowed to have a pet? How many, how large? Uh, I want to know if the property has earthquake insurance. I want to know what the issues are in the building right now. I look at the minutes, the meeting minutes. The minutes I want to see what they're discussing. Are there any assessments? Coming up. So if we don't understand, I want to know the parking spaces. If we don't understand, just bring it to you, right? Uh, always. I want to know the parking spaces. I want to know the storage, right? So those, those are the things we're looking at. Can they have a barbecue on the balcony? Yeah. As a buyer agent, do you have to explain, go through the inspection and every detail and explain to your buyer if buyer asks you, what's the way? What do you, you want to be? I think, to, I think that you should. Opinion? I think that you should look through it with them. But not give an opinion. No, I mean, you, you, you say I don't know what I'm mean, saying. If they're the relying, problem. if they're relying, if they're making their decision based upon you, uh -huh. then that's a problem. That's right. So, so, so make sure you can't it. say buy it. Exactly. Yeah, it's so not you're it, not the buyer. So give it. So give it to the to the to the buyer. Hundred percent. I mean that that they're the ones paying so for the case, In case something happens and say, oh, you told me like in the condo I cannot smoke and I didn't know and I'm a smoker and there's a problem. Who's responsible? So. So the way that I look at that is I never want to be challenged by their attorney saying to me, why didn't you tell my client that? That's the way I view it. I am always looking out like that. Like, like if, if the buyer hires an attorney and the attorney's naming the broker and me, right? For non-disclosure is usually the thing. Did I have, I, you know, did, is there something I knew that I was that I was hiding? If you don't know, you don't know. If right? you don't know, you don't know. But what? But also, what is my responsibility to to look for? No. Am I responsible for going through HOA documents? Probably not. No. Probably not. But reasonably, if I say to if I'm on trial and I'm being interviewed by the prosecuting attorney, and I say, look, agent agents usually don't go through HOA documents, but what I do look for are rental restrictions, uh, pending litigation. You know, these are the things that I do. And I did look for that. Was or something, right? Yeah, I mean, 
you, you as an agent need to do your basic due diligence uh, and not to be totally ignorant of the entire process. If something happens after the closing, can the buyer sue its agent or not, or not anymore? Anyone can sue anyone at any time, right? Whether, whether this lawsuit is valid or not. That, so usually, usually a seller has two, two years from the date of sale, the seller. Uh, usually the seller has two two years that they can be sued no, for the buyers may sue someone, not the seller. Like, no, the buyer is going to sue the seller for non-disclosure. No, or the agent. They're going to sue the seller or the, the agent. The buyer is going to sue everybody. Everybody. Everyone's suing everybody. Two Every, years. Who's who's paying? Where are the where's the pockets? Where's the money? They're going after everybody. The, the, the attorney is going to name everybody and the figure out who has the money. Insured, probably gonna have so uh, as agents, we're just going to do our the most we can. We can't be expected to be it. You're not an inspector, right? So you can do a visual inspection. You're not required to crawl underneath the house. Definitely not. And you're not even supposed to know how a foundation works. Like you're not, you're not an engineer. So don't worry about that. But visually, if you see a crack, so that when I fill out my visual inspection, I pretend my client's in New York and I'm describing the property to them. That's, well, so that's what I'm if doing. It's a property, I, I, I want to just get through this. Okay. Uh, the next page is, it, what's included? So are we asking for the dish, the washer and dryer, microwave? Here I wrote, look at the MLS photos and the description and check the items to include. So I like this, that bathroom mirrors are checked. I used to write this in, they, they added it to the, uh, to the contract, but bathroom mirrors are really important. It, it's automatically checked, but look what you can check here, potted plants. That's awesome. Oh, wow. If it has, yeah. just check the box. Just check, just check that box. Um, video doorbells, the ring, nest, you know, check. Chandeliers too? Chan anything attached anything to the attached. property, anything attached is automatically included. So the chandeliers is attached or not? The chandelier, chandelier is definitely attached. attached. Not only that, window coverings are attached. Oh. Yeah. So, but just look through. Now, if you look at this refrigerator checkbox, it has an S next to it. That means if you check that box, the extra refrigerator in the garage and the extra refrigerator in the master bed. This is basically every, all the refrigerators, everything. Wine fridge, the washer, dryer, dishwasher, microwave. You can even type something in. If I'm, if I'm making an offer on a property that has a, an above ground hot tub, I think there's a checkbox for that, maybe. Above ground pool, see that? Sometimes, you know, you see those movies where someone gets married in a beautiful gazebo. They, some people have beautiful gazebos with steps up. Um, those are not attached. They're on top of the ground. Top of the ground. So you'd write it in here. A gazebo, but the paintings gazebo. are not attached. Right, paintings. Sometimes you'll see giant barbecues. Paintings are not attached. You can, right? you can write it here. Painting is not attached. That's personal property. I have a question. Yeah. Even if it's a fixer and the appliances are not functioning, do we have to put the check mark? Do you want them? It's up to you if you want them. If you want them, check the box. Yeah. If you don't care, then don't check the box. Yeah. Um, I do want to talk real quickly about this part, inclusions and excluded. If, if in the MLS description of the property, it says that the washer and dryer are excluded. In the MLS, if it says that, washer and dryer are excluded. It says it in the MLS, and you have an email from the agent, the washer and dryer are excluded. If you check your offer here and you include them, they're included. They include it. If they, did, they, they would have to counter offer counter that it's excluded. The only thing that matters is your it's offer. Included. Your buyer is making an offer. These are the terms of the buyer's offer. If the seller disagrees with anything, they need to put it on a counter offer. Oh. Okay. This stands above everything because this is a contract. So any conversation or yes. verbal agreement, no, there's nothing verbal in real estate. The MLS is not a contract, right? This is the contract. So this, whatever is here is what goes. If there's anything that's disagreed with, with the contract, it has to be done on the counter. Um, okay, here we're talking about the natural hazards of disclosure. So there's a report. The seller is responsible for saying if the property is in a fire zone, flood zone, earthquake zone. We're, 
we want the seller to pay for that report. We check seller. My NHD is a great company. Uh, I know the owner, Eric, he comes here all the time. He's great. I also checked this box called environmental right there. Um, NHD seller pays, right? Like the seller, I checked the box seller, seller pays. Okay, here's, here's something very sneaky. I don't know how sneaky you want to be, but I wrote in here termite clearance report and I checked seller. Seller, so many values. I could have wrote termite report, but I wrote termite clearance. Oh. Clearance means they are they're they're agreeing to do the termite work wow. <laughs> in advance oh, wow. because a clearance report shows all the work has been completed. So this is a very sneaky way of getting the seller to pay for termite work in advance. If not, you have to pay I'm, for it. I'm not recommending that you do this if you don't want to be so sneaky. Like it's a, it's a sneaky thing. Like you, a, a good listing agent is going to see it and either agree to it or delete it in their counter off. So just, just letting you know, this is a very aggressive, it's very aggressive on behalf of your buyer of uh, trying to get the seller to agree to termite work in advance. There used to be termite dis talked about in the purchase agreement and it was deleted. Um, CAR attorneys, the reason it used to be included is because the listing agent, when they took the listing, was supposed to get a termite report when they took the listing. Nobody was doing it ever, nobody did it. But because the reason they removed it from the contract was because sellers were agreeing to termite work without knowing how much the termite work was. Sometimes you have a garage that's that's falling apart, and the seller has agreed in advance to to redo the entire garage. The termites normally part one, part two. I think seller only pays for one. Okay, part so part. so regarding termite reports, right. there's 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 something called section one yeah. and section two in a termite report. Section one is actual damage. What's actually wood rot, bug infested? That's section one damage. Section two is preventative maintenance. If there's a screen missing. That's section two. You know, in the crawl spaces, you can get rodents that come right, in. Right, right. If there's a screen missing, that's section two, it's preventative. Preventative, preventative maintenance. Pre section one is actual damage. So we normally, the seller is only gonna be on the hook for section one. We can't have, section two could be unlimited. Like, um, so I wrote here, this is asking the seller to pay for termite work in advance. Um, let's see what else we're talking about here. So we want the seller to pay for the smoke alarms, carbon monoxide, water heater bracing, uh, we're checking those boxes. Escrow fees. Um, try to fight for our escrow and title companies. They're awesome. Um, so <coughs> for escrow fee, there's different ways to fill this out. This is the way I fill it out. I wrote both to pay the same low rate. Um, and I put in Cannon Hills Closing <coughs> Pele. Now, you might have an agent who is for sure using their escrow company, for sure. Like you're not gonna get them to use ours. Okay, it happens. There, there are listing agents that have relationships going back a long time. They insist on using their escrow company. But what I don't wanna happen is that they have a special deal for their seller and our buyer is paying the bulk of it, right? Because there's nothing that says that escrow has to, the escrow fee is gonna be the same for both sides. And I know that seller is getting a preferred rate. Like there's kinds of tricks they can do on the statement. Like they can charge this amount, but then give a credit you back. Just sell it. So you just I sell just, it the way buy it, the seller it. usually pays less than the buyer. Less. less. Yeah. So the way that I have tried to avoid that is I both to pay the same low rate. Okay. Cause I already know they're getting a deal. Okay. Owner's title policy seller is going to pay for the buyer's title policy. Clearmark Title is our title company. Uh, we're also affiliated with Lauren Goldman at First American and Brandon Miller at Fidelity. Um, but our office has, a, has an ownership interest in Clearmark. So uh, we would like to use Clearmark. Uh, I also use Clearmark for all my research. I mean, I love Clearmark. So, okay, I real quick about title. It's insurance for your buyer that they are the owner of the property. That no one's gonna come in and say, I have, a, I have a claim to the property. Um, the seller customarily pays for the buyer's insurance policy. Mm -hmm. The buyer, if they get a loan, will pay for the lender's insurance policy. So the seller insures the buyer. 
the buyer will insure their lender. Okay, it's a, it's a small fee added to title that insures the lender, but that, that's generally how it works. Okay, so the seller will pay say 2,000 to $5,000 for an insurance policy. The buyer will normally pay a few hundred dollars to insure their lender. Okay, it's the same policy, but it, it has the lender rider on it. Um, see, it says here, buyer's lender title insurance buyer. It's automatically by the buyer. Transfer taxes. Seller is going to pay transfer taxes. Don't forget to check those boxes. I just got an offer on a property in Los Angeles. They forgot to check a box. Um, it's fine with me, you know, because the seller usually always pays. It's my listing. They didn't check the box. Okay, we, but I'm not going to play games for it. But um, we want to make sure that the seller is paying the transfer taxes. HOA transfer fees. If the property is in an HOA, we want to make sure the seller is paying those transfer fees. Uh, sometimes you'll have a private transfer fees. There is a property in, oh, notice how it is automatically saying seller on a private, it says private transfer fees seller. That's really great. Didn't used to do this. Um, there's properties in Marina Del Rey that actually have like a 3% transfer, private transfer fee, like crazy. So the seller, you know, has to pay for that. Um, okay, home warranty plan in the, in the folder that I'm going to share with you guys. Oh, here comes me. In the folder that I'm going to share with you guys, um, I have a bunch of different home warranties. And this just basically ensures the buyer will, the, we're asking the seller to pay for a policy where if there's anything goes wrong with the electrical, plumbing, air conditioning, stove, microwave, home refrigerator, warranty. it's a home warranty. The buyer basically pays $79 to the home warranty company. They come out and fix it. That's all. So I talk about that more in my resource folder that I'm sharing with you guys. That's really it. Um, that's really it. Like the rest of the stuff is all boilerplate language. Um, come on in, come on in, hello. Uh, the only other thing here is just if- How about the, if it's a land lease or something versus a thing? So that's not to, this, that's, that's not this purchase agreement. Oh, it's not on this. Not this purchase agreement. So the other, the, the last part of this is just the agents are signing. Um, so that that's really it for today. Um, we're gonna we're gonna go over the purchase agreement again and again. Hopefully, we'll have part three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, Don't worry. Okay. We're gonna we're gonna do this all the time. Okay. Oh, So I just want everyone. You are amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Are amazing. I just want everyone to email me if you want the resource access yeah, to the resource folder. Yeah. Yeah. JJ. Yes. You, check you want to? Check oh, but I'm sharing. You can have the whole form. Oh, really? You can have it. Yeah, oh, okay. I filled it out for all for you guys. Did you, do you have any more? Um, online. Who's who's asking me something? Okay, this this form, this pre filled out form, is going to be in your. Um, in the info you share with us? Yes, it'll be in the agent resources folder that I'm sharing with you. Just email me um, that you want a, a link to that resources folder. Okay, can you email Yeah, my, my email is jj at w-a-l-l-a-c-k dot com. JJ at Wallach.com with a K. We're going to have to run I was doing this note to my targeting, and I have a whole bunch of addresses, but you have to add each one individually to your database and then do it from there. Is that how you get them printed on the on the back of this? Because it says recipient address right here. So so how would you make sure that each one gets printed with a different address from the title? Oh, okay. So I have all these addresses here. Okay, so you're importing, you're importing your form and showing them out. Yeah, so. Um, I'm not there yet. I'm not there yet, okay. but I will be. Okay. I'm going to be a commander expert. Um, I'm just not there yet. Okay, okay. Right now, um, my focus, I'm sorry. Okay. My focus right now is Maybe just about, it's actually on the July calendar okay. because okay. we're doing it not doing a lot of days. Okay. But command is definitely in my radar. Okay. We're going to all be command experts. So as right I now, I want to apply my, my Joshua. Right now. That's Joshua. 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 And there's Joshua. also Joshua in the office. Joshua. Josh call, call Joshua. Oh, Josh Colley. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, Josh Colley. He knows command. He knows command. And there are also oh. videos on AWS. Yeah. Okay. There are videos out there. So you can import all this. Yes. You, you don't have to hand manually type this one. Correct. Correct. 
Okay, and, and also uh, reach out to Josh Kelly. Josh Kelly. Josh Kelly. Yeah. He always sits on the second. Yeah. Second but, seat. Uh, yeah, six four six. Yeah, yeah. Six four six. Or ask Armand himself. Okay. We also we also have people that handle digital stuff. Okay. Um, the the, 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 the mailer. They'll handle helping. Um, Did you, do you have any more leads? I don't. Not today. They'll handle what? Digital help. So we have Yes. So they can um, I know that I know that there are very useful how to videos. Um, but this is how you would set up your campaign. Yes, 100%. Yes. Uh, I'm going to look for Mr. Yeah, John, Joshua. I know you have to speak. Uh, what would you recommend purchasing? Uh, I'm it's, it's whoever you want to call it. Okay. But GLEs is more like information about Ge that. geographical. So that's area. The area. So how would they would it give you like? Now the, the cool thing about the Red X is that it, you get a you get a dialer with it, yeah. and it'll call it'll start calling everybody, and you don't have to waste your time trying to get anything to call it. It'll just be dialing, 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 dialing. dialing. So it comes with the standard. Uh, you have to call Red X. Uh, you have to, you have to yeah. call the Red But you said the most recommended ones is all of them, probably like for anything, anything. Anything. They're all good. So, um, what's the difference? What's a geo? Geo is ge geographic. So, like an area. So, leave them what would the lead be pertaining call, to? Call them, really, call them. Call them. They'll help you. They want to sell you everything. They'll help you. They want to sell you. No, but they want to sell you everything. Be careful that you subscribe to. Yeah, I know. But there's also places online that will give you $100. Coupon. Like, yeah, so just search for Reddit on Google. So, this is a complete contract. That is a complete contract, and you'll have it on the resource. JJ, that's my email, wallet.com. So, so you want to be able to do it. No, also, no problem. No problem. Thank you, JJ. I emailed you. Okay, good. Okay. Hey, nice to meet you. My name is Alexis. Hi, Alexis. Uh, Alexis. Yeah, Alexis. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, all right. I look forward to it. Okay. Yeah. Good. I haven't got my license yet. Oh, okay. I'm super excited good. about all of this. And okay. It's good that you're coming to the class. Yeah, I love it. Good. I was right. like, you, were, you were the very first person that I attended. Okay, that's great. Okay, yeah. good. Keep going. Keep going. <laughs> so, I'm I'm right. office. Um, my office is against the wall over there. I have, a, I have a big for sale sign in my window. Okay. So, it says JJ Wallace for sale. For sale. Yeah. <laughs> I'm for sale. Okay, so uh, do you mind if I stop by? I'm happy to talk to you anytime. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay. We are so lucky to have you. We're so lucky we're going to be. You are so we are, lucky. We are so close. We didn't know that before. We have to ask them to raise your salary, $200,000 a year. Okay. In advance. <laughs> I don't know if I should stop recording or this should keep going. I have no idea. Yes. I don't know. I guess we'll end this one and yes. then.